iOS 16 Public Beta 1 on the iPhone 10, and I chose the iPhone 10, and we'll talk about the performance and how the iPhone 10 is aged a little bit later in the video. Up front, I wanted to talk about the differences and things that they've added to iOS 16, which are quite useful. The one that everyone's going nuts about, and rightfully so, is the lock screen improvements that they've added to iOS 16. Way overdue, in my opinion. They did some work with iOS 15 with the lock screen, but 16 is night and day over what we had previously. I really like the customizations. I like the way it looks. I like the, the RT design stuff. They brought the clownfish back, which the internet went nuts about. I'm gonna go ahead and, and just unlock it with my face here for a moment. So you can see, you got, you got, you can have different ones. You can have one for work, one for the weekend, one for when you're on vacation. You know, one sports one with those live notifications, whatever it happens to be. But you could change them right there. Full customization. You could go into this one. Make sure we can go ahead and hit the button for that. Customize. You could change the, the clock and you could change the different widgets that you have here. And there's quite a few of them that you could choose from system ones. You could have stocks. You could have weather. You could have battery. You have air quality warnings and stuff like that that you have at the top, which is quite cool. I was going to go ahead and cancel that. We'll set as wallpaper pair. There you go. So that's just fine. Then you could go ahead and select it. The one thing that they've made as a major upgrade to the lock screen, which I've noticed, which I've used quite a bit, is notifications. Even on iOS 15, where they've cleaned it up quite a bit, notifications are an absolute disaster on the lock screen of the iPhone. They never figured out how to do it right. They could stack, do whatever they want with the stacking, and then they made it a little bit easier to clear all of them and check all of them. But when they show up, it's just a jumbled mess, and you never even really look at your iPhone lock screen in order to get notifications. Aside from the uh, a text glance that you get, which was relatively clean, as far as app notifications are concerned, I never relied on the lock screen of my iPhone, and that's absolutely changed. You can see, it's tough to tell with that one, but when you get a new one in from Twitter or somewhere, it'll come in as a thin bar at the bottom, it'll light up the screen, you can see it, it's clear, and what's good is then you get this kind of rotating Rolodex of your different notifications from different apps. But the great thing is when you want it to shrink back down, you can kind of shrink it back down. But when you have a new one, it'll stay at the top. It'll stay that first one. So it's compact. It's easy to cycle through. You can eliminate ones that you want. So let's see, we get rid of that one. And then we move on to the next one. It's smooth, it's fluid, it works. It's a heck of a lot better than what you had on iOS 15. For whatever reason, it took them uh, 10 years to figure out notifications, but I do think they actually have them figured out with this new lock screen. And hopefully this is all a precursor to finally getting an always-on display with the iPhone 14. And if that's the case, then they're going to make their home screen and lock screen really usable from a locked position, which is good because I never, every time, listen, if you're a fellow iPhone user, let me know because I, for years, my, the only inter interaction that I've had with the iPhone is to open it up. When I get a notification, I don't deal with any of the stuff on the lock screen. I just say, you know what, look at it, open it up and go into each individual app. So it's actually helpful to have system-wide notifications usable on the lock screen. The other things that they improved were maps. You can have multiple destinations now. Let's go ahead. Yeah. So I put I put this one up here. So we're going to so you can add. So I just said, let's go to Best Buy's from where I am right now. So you can add a stop. Why is this useful? Well, if you're going to pick up friends, if you're going to do run an errand real quick, what's good, it's for planning. So let's say you said, oh, geez, you know, we really should go to Target before we go to dinner tonight. Or I, I know we're going to Best Buy, but we got to beat your mom's by two. Something like that. You could put this in and say, well, how much time am I going to have? Am I going to have a nice little buffer or gap in space there that makes it work? Or is it, oh, we're going to be late? Then we're not going to go ahead and add that stop. Oh, man, we got plenty of time. This says that we'll be there with 20 minutes to spare. Then you could go ahead and add a stop, run into a store, whatever you happen to be. So I like that feature. I think it's, it's more useful than people think if you're going ahead and planning your day more than just point-to-point -point navigation. The other thing that's a big deal, or at least for a lot of people, is I'm going to go into the health app here. Medications. So not only will it keep track of your medications, which is absolutely helpful, but it'll t make sure that there are no interactions between your medications. And I understand that your doctor is supposed to do this, and I understand that the pharmacist is supposed to do this as well. But it's 2022. Humans make errors. And it's just, you know how things are. Look, it, it, it's 
helpful and nice peace of mind to have an extra set of eyeballs, or rather another computer, making sure that everything's okay. It's just that little bit extra peace of mind that, you know what, there's no, in, there's no interactions with these medications. You have them all tracked. When you have to take them, you can set notifications to remind you of when you take them. If you're an old, a lot of older people use iPhones, okay? A lot of grandmas use an iPhone. That's the point, because they're easy to use. They work well. They're relatively reliable. They're friendly to use as well with all the big icons. So that's something that might be nice. You go to grandmas, you set up, hey, listen, when you, this notification, you take this medicine. So if you have an elderly person in your life, if you're taking medications yourself and you always forget, go ahead, put them in here and in the health app. It'll keep track of it for you. It'll let you know when you're supposed to take them, but also test those interactions. You know, maybe the doctor was busy that day, didn't quite catch it. The pharmacist, who knows, were there. People, <laughs> I, you don't want to say that people don't do their jobs anymore, but, you know, the, the things happen. Things happen. So it's nice to be able to have something like this as just a final backup to kind of give you that peace of mind. Messages, I didn't see the be able to edit bit on messages so i don't know if they've integrated that yet that probably comes with a later beta so i don't know i you know personally i didn't you know what you just correct it you just correct whatever message i don't know if I, i'm a huge fan or if i'll even use the edited messages to go in and say oh i missed I, a typo so i go in i i think we were fine with that if it's a particularly embarrassing one or you sent something that you didn't want to send and they also have iMessage then that could be useful you could go ahead and delete whatever message that it was that you have there but the live tiles of course work just fine but you you'd have something like that performance i want to talk about that because i keep people ask me should i daily drive a beta i never recommend that i android 13 is the first time that i recommend you daily driving a beta on the pixel 6 because android 12 wasn't very good so i don't think so i would wait until the full release of ios 16 i had problems with the mail app I've had different issues with this. I've had the mail app crash when I was trying to go through multiple inboxes. And that's something that was a problem with the release of iOS 15. And it's, it's rare for Apple. It's rare for Apple to have those kind of, kind of functional bugs really early on. This is a beta and you could give them a pass, but that made it into iOS 15 that I had some crashes, more crashes than I would expect. And while everything works well and it's fully featured on your iPhone 10, you can tell it's a beat slower. And you get those crashes, but not a lot. I mean, it's perfectly usable. But I think that's why they've been more aggressive in culling the older iPhones off the schedule and off the support schedule. So the iPhone 7 was dropped this year as far as support's concerned. It's not getting iOS 16, which is weird because it should have been fully available for iOS 16 if they were following kind of their schedule of iOS, you know, the iPhone 6 getting dropped last year and then the 6S and then the 7 now. So I, I, thought, I felt that was odd, but that might be, it might be silly. You might think it's a valid reason or not, but as they add more of these features like the lock screens, like, I don't know, they think they'll bring always on display to these older devices, but as they do things and bring more features to these devices, are we going to sacrifice perhaps a year of support on the back end instead of that six or seven years? Maybe it's only five or six with these iPhone devices. I, I don't know. I don't think they need to do that personally. You know how they are. If there's even a mild hiccup in performance, they just say the phone's not supported anymore and they leave it on iOS 15 or the last update it got. Whether that's right or not, I don't know. On your iPhone 10, it's running well. You can get these. Link will be in the description. Amazon, two, like 200 bucks, 250 bucks. It's a nice entry into the iPhone ecosystem, iOS ecosystem. You get a premium build. You know, no, everyone's going to know it's an iPhone, you know, older design or not. It's not even that old of a design the performance is quite nice you know if you don't do a whole heck of a lot not big into gaming you're going to get all the ios features that you can imagine still on your iphone 10 and battery life was decent you know i didn't have a lot of battery drain which is something you experience sometimes on betas of os's i didn't have battery drain a performance was good twitter instagram everything you'd want to do and the camera's still decent so for 250 bucks if you're looking to get a premium build and get into iphones this is certainly uh, one that's going to be running well on ios 16 next year i don't know you know, it, it, will they drop this generation as they add more and more features and get more like Android and kind of push it a little bit more than they have previously? I don't know. But if you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve Lucious day.